Hello, this is the third tutorial in the low poly tank series. And in this tutorial, we will be texturing. So it's fairly straightforward with a low poly style. We won't do any unwrapping today. If you want to learn more about unwrapping and more complex textures, then click the card in the top right or look below for the links. Firstly, I'm going to change to cycles because I feel it gives a nicer result. OK, so the first thing to do is to go to the material tab and add a new material for this hubcap object. This one's going to be green. So I'll say this is my green material and it's a diffuse, which is just a basic color with no reflection. And I'll change the color to green. I'll give it a mid tone and you'll notice I can't see anything on my model. What I need to do is come down here to material mode. And now you can see the rest of my model has white and this has green. I probably want a couple of shades of green, maybe a different shade for the base of the tank. So let's click on that. If you get this symbol here, press use nodes, or if you're confused by that, just delete the material and add a new one. So let's add a slightly different green and this is going to be slightly darker. I'll call it dark green. Okay. For the tank tracks, I'm going to give them a gray texture. So new gray and change that down to gray. And for all the rest, I need them to have the same as this one. Now, in order to do this, I'll select the rest of them. That's holding down shift and right clicking and select the one I want to take the color from last. Then press control L to link materials. And you can see they've all got that light gray material. So if I feel that I don't like that light gray and I want it to be a bit darker, I can change it and they'll all change because they all have that material. Okay. So now I'm going around adding basic materials to my objects. Now the lights, I'm going to do something slightly different. If I go into edit mode, I want the front faces here to have a different material to these faces. So these top faces, I'm happy to give them the same as the tank tracks here. So let's add a new material and select those tank tracks gray. And it's given the material to all the object. I'm going to create a new material up here. That's not here. That's up here. So this is the objects materials and press the plus sign and give it an emission shader. So that will turn them into lights. And I'll give them a yellowy light in order to add this material to these faces. I need to select those faces. I can actually select the middle here and press control plus and it will select those outer faces. So that's adding one to the selection or you can just select them by hand and then press assign. So with those faces selected, press assign and it will assign it to those faces. Now, because these two are exactly the same, I should be able to control L and link object data this time. And that will link everything precisely, including the difference in materials. Okay. And if you get to this stage and you're not happy with your materials, you can go in and start editing them slightly. And you can go into the objects themselves and edit parts of the object as well by using the technique I've just said. If I want to render my tank, it might be good to add a floor. So make sure you're in object mode, shift a mesh plane, scale it up. And if you press the N key, you can move the object to the center at the top here with the location. You can select all and press zero and that will move it to the center. Let's go to side view and orthographic mode and I can pull it down to the bottom of the tank. Let's go back to perspective mode. Let's quickly add some lighting before we render. I'm going to change this to a sun lamp and I'm going to press use nodes and let's go to rendered mode with shift Z. That's rendered mode down here as well. And there's our tank and I can increase the sun slightly. I can change the sharpness of the shadows. A higher number is softer and a lower number is sharper shadows. Let's go back to the render tab and render out our results. So in order to render, let's go to the render tab. If you've got a graphics card that's suitable, then 
GPU compute instead of CPU. This is your resolution size. I'll keep it at 50% HD for now. Sampling is going to be very important, but I'm actually going to bring it down to 50 samples because I'm going to show you a new feature in Blender 2.79 in just a moment. But before we get there, let's go down to the performance. Make sure your Hilbert spiral is set to something nice and high if you're using your GPU. Either 256 or 512 works nicely in my case. And lastly, this new feature is the denoising feature. And let's render that and see how it works. So it's rendered nice and quickly, and the denoising feature has done a reasonably good job down here. I might turn the samples up just a touch, especially as we're only rendering a still image. I'm also going to move the camera. So press escape to come out of this. Let's go into camera mode and lock camera to view. Press N if you haven't got this panel. Lock camera to view and move it to a nicer location. Lastly, let's bring the samples up just a touch. And let's render again. It's quite dark at the moment, so maybe I'll add in another light. So Shift D to duplicate, move it across, and then change the settings to whatever suits you. Let's go to rendered mode and see what that looks like. It's a bit brighter. Maybe one more for a three-point lighting setup. And there we go, our low poly tank. In the next episode, I'll show you quickly how you can export this to programs like Unity or the website Sketchfab. Thanks for watching.